Bienvenidos, Husham Deed, and welcome to another supplemental video tutorial on the Cisco Networking Academy Introduction to Python course. In this lab, we're going to be taking a look at questions and answers. In other words, we're going to be prompting the user for some input. We're going to see functional composition again and some typecasting that's going to take place. And then we're going to answer the question as to whether or not one number is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And so we're going to take a look at some operators. So let's dive in. And this lab is the first lab of module three. So, and it's also much easier, and you can see here, level of difficulty is very easy compared to the last lab of module two, which was 2.1.6.11, where we worked with the clock and the different times. So here, uh, we're just going to become familiar with the input function. We're gonna prompt the user, using a comparison operator here, we're gonna prompt the user uh, to enter an integer in, and if that integer uh, is, what are they saying here? Less than 100, we're going to print false. So if n, which is the variable that we're going to use. So if n is less than 100, we're going to print false. And if n is greater than or equal to 100, we're going to print true. Now, it's interesting the way that this problem is presented to you because it is extremely straightforward. If we look at it logically, right, if we want it to print true, right, to get that Boolean true, we need to test to see is n greater than or equal to 100. Because if it is, then we print true. If it's not, then it would automagically print false, right? So if it's less than 100 and is I think well yeah less than 100 if it's less than 100 so 99 and below it's going to print false anyway so this is all we need to test for right we don't need to test and like I said they presented to you with the sort of the idea that we're testing to see if n is less than 100 first when in fact all you need to test is whether it's greater than or equal to 100 because if it's not greater than or equal to 100 then by definition it is less than 100 right so they give it to you almost in sort of a backwards logical sense because a lot of learners that i work with will look at the first half and think oh well i need to put in you know to test uh you know in less than 100 well you don't because if it's not true that it's greater than or equal to 100 by definition it's less than 100 and again you can see they give you a little note here do not create any if blocks so this can actually be done in two very easy to read straightforward lines of code so again we're not using any if statements and so here's what that would look like i'll put my comments up here and just simply say lab 3.1.1.5 the first lab and then let's go ahead and say in that's our variable name and what are we going to assign to it well we're working with integers here right and we're prompting the user so we're going to go ahead and say integer and then input and please enter an integer right now again we're looking at functional composition here we have the input function inside the integer function in other words whatever's returned whatever the user enters in at the keyboard to this prompt enter an integer it's going to be typecast uh, to an integer data type because by default the input function is going to return a string and the only thing that we needed to print was False if it's less than 100, and true if it's greater than or equal, greater than or equal to 100. And that is all we need. Because remember, the Boolean, and if I come out here to the interactive interpreter, if I was to say 55 greater than or equal to 100, what is that going to print? And actually, it looks like we had the keyboard offset there just a skosh and so it's going to print false right so 105 is that greater than or equal to 100 
and it prints true. So again, by testing to see if it's greater than or equal to 100, that is also going to be testing for us whether it's less than or equal to 100 by virtue of the fact that if it's not greater than or equal to 100, we're going to get false. All right, so let's step back over here to the lab and let's run this. So the first input they want is 55. We should see false, and we do. And they run us through, boy, they run us through a whole bunch here. And let's run this again. And the next one is going to be 99, and that should be false. That is less than uh, 100. We'll run it again, and we'll type in 100. And now they're testing to make sure that we had the greater than or equal to. And it stalls sometimes in the browser. So I'm going to grab this. We're going to come back over to the interactive interpreter. I'm going to drop this in here. We're going to run this from here. Give us some interactive interpreter uh, activity. So 100. And again, it's true, right? Because it's greater than or equal to. Let's run it again. And oops, let's click in that window. Let's run that again. And let me see the next value that they want. So 101, negative 5, and 123. So 101 should be true. Negative 5 is going to end up being false because that is way below 100. And then finally, they want us to go ahead and put in this plus 123. Remember, you could do that when you're working with integers. Put that plus sign in front of a positive integer. But that is the same as this. So there's no need for the plus sign. But again, it's something that you could do and that is greater than or equal to 100. And so that is our first lab in module 3, lab 3.1.1.5. And again, all you're testing for is to see is n greater than or equal to 100. And you're printing that result out because that is what we're looking looking for in terms of the expected output. All right, well, this was a very easy and straightforward lab, and that is going to do it for lab 3.1.1.5 on questions and answers. Thank you so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in another video soon.